Good evening, children. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening, children. Good evening. Yeah. So in the last class on um, uh, Tuesday, uh, since uh, you know all of you had learned this chapter at school, I had directly given you a worksheet. Okay, so that you realize where you stand, what you know, and what you still need to understand. And now I'm aware that we have to discuss the answers to that worksheet which I gave you in the last class. I just finished the presentation, meaning it's not completely ready. So I think next class I'll be able to uh, discuss the answers because it's ready. You know, otherwise I'll have to write and uh, you know uh, that takes a little longer time. So I've all, I'm almost done with the presentation. So next class we'll see the answers to the worksheet you uh, had on um, Tuesday. All right. So now formally I'm starting off this chapter because I haven't given you the introduction to this chapter. All right. Okay. So. Coordinate geometry and why coordinate geometry. All right. Now, coordinate geometry is used to describe, uh, also called the Cartesian system. Coordinate geometry, also called the Cartesian system, is used to describe the position of a point in a plane. Now, see, every house has an address. So how does the uh, postman or the postwoman deliver the uh, parcel or letters to you? Because every house has a unique address. All right. So uh, there's the door number, then the street on which the house is located, and then the area, the district, pin code, state. So there is, you know, one house, but it, it has so many details. So using these details, that particular house can be exactly figured out. So with the help of the address, OK? In the same way, when we have a point on a plane surface, we have a point on a plane surface. Now, how do you explain where that point lies? So there's a plane surface and say. And say the point lies here. How will you give an address to this point? Now you need to say that this point lies here. But how do you so you you understand this point should have some address so that you can locate its position exactly perfectly. And this point should have an address. So in order to give an address to this point, which lies on the plane surface, we need two lines. All right, we need two lines. The horizontal line, which is called the X axis and the vertical line, which is called the Y axis. To give an address to this point, which lies on a plane surface, we take the help of two lines. One line, which is horizontal, called the X axis and the other line, which is vertical, called the Y axis. So with the help of these two lines, they're not line segments, they're lines. OK, so with the help of these two lines, we will be able to give an address to any point that lies on a plane surface. So the plane on which the plane, the plane meaning the plane surface. So the plane on which the point lies is called the Cartesian plane. The plane on which the plane, plane meaning the flat surface, right? So the plane on which the point lies is called the Cartesian plane. The horizontal line is called the X axis and the vertical line is called the Y axis. So with the help of these two lines, you can give an address to any point that lies on a plane. So. These are lines, children. These are lines. Now, supposing there's a point here. There's a point here. So, you know, one, two, three, one. So maybe this is this is given by the address three comma minus two. This point is given by the address, like how every house is a unique address. 
Every point in the Cartesian plane has a unique address. Every point in the Cartesian plane has a unique address. All right. So now this point is given by the address 3 comma 2 in the Cartesian plane. So this is the need for, uh, uh, you know, the Cartesian system. So basically to identify where exactly a point lies on a plane surface. To have an address to this point which lies on the plane surface. Is why we have the system called the Cartesian system. All right, don't write anything now. Don't write anything now. So you can see here. The system by which we can describe the position of a point in a plane is called the Cartesian system. In Cartesian system, there are two perpendicular lines, one horizontal and other vertical. OK, now these two lines are required to locate the position of a point or an object. The plane is called the Cartesian. The plane is called the Cartesian or the coordinate plane. I told you Cartesian plane, so this is the other term. OK, it's also called the coordinate plane, coordinate geometry, coordinate plane or the Cartesian plane. The plane that is a flat surface. OK, the plane or the flat surface on which the point lies. All right, so the plane is called the Cartesian plane or the coordinate plane and the lines are called the coordinate axis axis see this plural i have not made a spelling mistake okay axis is singular we say x axis y axis together they are called the coordinate axis coordinate axis together both together they are called the coordinate axis plural AXIS singular, AXES plural. The two lines, the X axis and the Y axis together are called the coordinate axis. So the horizontal line which you see here, xx dash, the horizontal line xx dash, all right, is called the x axis, and the vertical line y y dash is called the y axis. The horizontal line xx dash is called the x axis, and the vertical line y y dash is called the y axis. Okay, so this is xx dash, and this is y y dash. This is the x axis. And this is the y axis. Now, this is the positive side of the x axis. This is the negative side of the x axis. This is the positive side of the x axis. This is the negative side of the x axis. This is the positive side of the y axis. This is the negative side of the y axis. So this entire thing is the x-axis. This is the positive side. This is the negative side. This thing is the y-axis. This one is the positive side. This one is the negative side. So the point where x, x dash and y, y dash intersect is called the origin. So this one is called the origin and it's given by the address 0 comma 0. Origin, the, every point is represented by a capital letter. Every point, every point is represented by a capital letter. All right. So supposing you you want to mark a point here, you cannot call it uh, with uh, you know a small letter A. Points are always represented using the uppercase of the English alphabet. So if you have you know some random points like this you cannot you cannot mark them x y z you should not mark them like this you should not points are not represented using the lower case in the english alphabet always capital letters point a point b point c point d point e capital letters only so the origin is represented by the capital letter O and given by the address 0, 0. 
now everything looks identical okay so understand this is the letter o this point this point which is called the origin is represented by the letter o because we know every point is represented by a capital letter in the english alphabet so the origin is represented using the capital letter o and the address of the origin the address of the origin is 0 comma 0 the address of the origin is 0 comma 0 okay so as i was telling you that this is the positive side this is the positive side of the x axis so ox ox is the positive side of the x axis ox dash ox dash ox dash is the negative side of the x axis o y o y this ray o o o y represents the positive side of the y axis and the ray o y dash o y dash represents the negative side of the y axis o x positive side x axis o y positive side y axis o x dash negative side x axis o y dash negative side y axis so these are the details you have on the slide and then the coordinate axis divides the plane on which it lies into four quadrants the coordinate axis that is the x axis and the y axis they divide the plane on which they lie into four quadrants this is called the first quadrant this one is the second quadrant this is the third quadrant and this is the fourth quadrant we cannot change the order this is the first quadrant you we cannot mark it like okay let me take this as the first quadrant this one is the second quadrant this is the third quadrant this is the fourth quadrant no it's not a choice we don't have a choice there this is the first quadrant this is the second quadrant and this is the third quadrant this is the fourth quadrant so the first quadrant the first quadrant has the positive side of the x axis and the positive side of the y axis so the address of any point that lies in this quadrant the address of any point that lies in the first quadrant will be both positive that is the x coordinate is positive the y coordinate is also positive i'll tell you what what is this x coordinate what is this y coordinate i'll come there now for any point that lies in the second quadrant the second quadrant has the negative side of the x axis and the positive side of the y axis negative side of the x axis and positive side of the y axis so every point that lies in the second quadrant will have its x coordinate negative and the y coordinate positive x coordinate is written first and then the y coordinate while writing the address of a point open a simple bracket write the x coordinate comma write the y coordinate close a simple bracket and that is the address of a point in the cartesian plane for every point that lies in the third quadrant in the third quadrant you can see that the third quadrant has the negative side of the x axis and the negative side of the y axis so clearly every point that lies in the third quadrant will look like minus some number comma minus some number meaning negative both the values are negative negative x coordinate negative y coordinate and for every point that lies in the fourth quadrant uh, since it has the since the fourth quadrant has uh, since the fourth quadrant has the positive side of the x axis and the negative side of the y axis positive side of the x axis negative side of the y axis the x coordinate will be positive and the y coordinate will be negative
So that's what is in this slide. Okay. Now let's just mark a point in the Cartesian plane. Okay. Now let's say we mark three comma five. All right. So three, three comma five. Three is here on the x-axis, and five is here on the y-axis. So three comma C. Uh, we are interested in marking the point three comma five. All right. So three on the x-axis. This is three on the x-axis, and this is five on the y-axis. You want to locate a positive three and a positive five. Positive three, positive five. So this is positive three and this is positive five. All right, so where do they meet? This is the point. This point in the Cartesian plane is given by the address three comma five. This point, this point in the Cartesian plane is given by the address three comma five. You can see a three comma five. Now, what is a three? How did we, uh, you know, uh, consider three? See, how we did this. We did this, right? This is three on the x-axis. We said this is three on the x-axis. We said, and we said this is five on the y-axis. This one is five on the y-axis, and hence we located the point here because that's where they intersect when you. When you show using these lines, you can see that they inter the two lines intersect here. And this is the point that's given by the coordinates 3, 5. Now, what is this? Clearly, the x coordinate, which is 3, is the. Now, see here, this one. Because if this is 3, if this is 3, this is also 3, right? This is also 3. If this is 5, this one is also five. This one is also five. Rectangle. This is three. So this one is also three units. This is five. This is five. This one is five. So this one is also five. Now, now see how phi stands. Phi stands perpendicular to the x-axis. Phi stands perpendicular to the x-axis. And three stands perpendicular to the y axis. What is three? This three units. Like if you have to describe, just describe this number three. If you simply have to describe this number three. Uh, so you will say it is the perpendicular distance. See, it perpendicular because three units. See, this, this line segment is perpendicular to the y axis. You can see there. This line segment is perpendicular to the y axis. And how many units? Three units. And where is the point? The point is here. So the perpendicular distance, the perpendicular distance of this point, let me call it A, the perpendicular distance of this point A from the y axis is three units. That is the x coordinate. The x coordinate represents the perpendicular distance of the point A from the y axis. And the y coordinate, which is five, the y coordinate, which is five, is shown here in the figure. It's shown here. It's here. Five is shown here. And what is this line segment? If you have to describe five, what will you say? So five units, it's nothing but the perpendicular distance of the same point A from the x axis. You can see here. This line segment is perpendicular to the x axis. And it's uh, the length of this line segment is five units. So the y coordinate represents the perpendicular distance of the point from the x axis. From the x axis. Let's just do the same thing again. This is the point three comma five. Let's call it a three comma five. Now this one is a rectangle. This one is a rectangle. Opposite sides are equal. So this is three units. So this one is also three units. This is five units. This is also five units. Now we want to understand the meaning of the x-coordinate. What is the meaning or what does the x-coordinate also represent? 
So where do we have three here in the figure? We have three here. We also have it here. But since this three is from the point A, we are interested in this three. There is three here also. But we are interested in this, this line segment, which represents three units because it connects the point A to the Y axis. OK, it connects. We're interested in this line segment, which is three units because it connects the point A to the Y axis. So this line segment is perpendicular to the Y axis. And you can see that the distance of the point A from the Y axis is three units. This is the perpendicular distance of the point A from the Y axis, and that is three units, which is the X coordinate. And we are interested in this line segment because it again connects the point A to the X axis. So this line segment represents the perpendicular distance of the point A from the X axis. And that's five, which is the Y coordinate. So the X coordinate. Represents the perpendicular distance of a point from the Y axis. The Y coordinate represents the perpendicular distance of the point from the X axis. So if they ask you for this point, if the question is what is the perpendicular distance of this point A from the X axis? So the answer is the Y coordinate five units. And if the question is, what is the perpendicular distance of this point A from the Y axis? Then the answer is the X coordinate, which is three units. So you don't have to measure anything to find the perpendicular distance of a given point from the X axis and Y axis. You don't have to take your scale and measure anything. Just look at the address of the point or the coordinate of the point, the X coordinate will tell you the perpendicular distance of the point from the y axis. The y coordinate will tell you the perpendicular distance of the point from the x axis. The x, the x coordinate is also called the abscissa. Abscissa. And the y coordinate is also called the ordinate. Ordinate. Abscissa. Plural abscissae. Plural abscissae. Ordinate, plural ordinates. You must have all come across, no, in uh, biology. Biology, we say amoeba, amoebae. Similarly, abscissa, abscissae. Abscissae is the plural form of abscissa. Ordinates is the plural form of ordinate. What is abscissa? It's the other term for the X coordinate. X coordinate. Only that X coordinate. An ordinate. Like you spell scissor, no? You can see that here. Scissor. How do you spell scissor? S C I S S O R. That that scissor. Ab. Abscissa. A. Like you spell scissor. Ab, ab, and then scissor. S C I S S abscissa. Ordinate. So this is the X coordinate. This is the X, this is the other term for the X coordinate. And ordinate is the Y coordinate. Y coordinate. So the address of a point is written like abscissa comma ordinate. The address of a point. Is written within uh, simple brackets within simple brackets abscissa comma ordinate. It's not the other way. It is not ordinate comma abscissa. It's not like this. It's like this. Now. Uh, online, OK, all of you are online today. Sorry, uh, so children use the emoji. Raise your hand. Vishik, Bhavishya, Mritsa, um, Hari Pranav, Swati, Laksha, Anirudhan, Sahana, 
അനുഗ്രഹ നിവേദ അഴകമ്മായി കൃഷ്ണപ്രിയൻ ബ്ലസി ആൻഡ് ശ്രീ വത്സൻ കൃഷ്ണപ്രിയൻ യു മിസ് ദ ലാസ്റ്റ് ക്ലാസ് യാ ബ്ലസി യെസ് ഓക്കെ ശ്രീ വത്സൻ യു ദർ ഐ ഹോപ്പ് കൃഷ്ണപ്രിയൻ ഐ ടോൾ യു ഇഫ് യു ആർ നോട്ട് ടേക്കിംഗ് അപ്പ് ക്ലാസ് യു മീൻ ടെക്സ്റ്റ് മീ ആഫ്റ്റർ ദ സെഷൻ പ്ലീസ് ടെക്സ്റ്റ് മീ ദ റീസൺ വൈ യു മിസ് ദ ലാസ്റ്റ് ക്ലാസ് ഓൾറൈറ്റ് ഓക്കെ മാം യാ ഓൾറൈറ്റ് യു യാ വാട്ട് വാസ് ഐ ടെല്ലിംഗ് യു ഐ വാസ് സീയിങ് സംതിങ് ഓ മൈ ഗോഡ് ഐ ഫോർഗോട്ട് വാട്ട് ഐ വെർ ഹാവ് ടു കണ്ടിന്യൂ ഫ്രോം all right so i stopped here oh yeah right i got it yes <laughs> so uh when you have a point you know so now in on the cartesian plane we saw four quadrants right first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant fourth quadrant apart from this there are other locations these are not the only four locations in the cartesian plane See, when you see the cartesian plane we feel that okay uh, a point can lie in the first quadrant if it's not in the first quadrant second quadrant okay if it's not in the second quadrant also then maybe it's in the third quadrant okay it's not there also then it has to be in the fourth quadrant no these are not the only four locations in the cartesian plane the any the given a point that point need not lie in one of the four quadrants now supposing there's a point there's a point you look out for the point in the first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant fourth quadrant you don't find it then you will say no there is no point at all i checked all the four quadrants it's not there no there are other locations in the cartesian plane the other location excuse me children yeah thank you children so if you don't find the point in any one of these four quadrants it doesn't mean that there, there is no point at all the point uh, so a point can also lie on the x axis or on the y axis these are also locations now the x axis the x axis is not a part of any quadrant the y axis this axis this line is not a part of any quadrant so if a lie if a point lies here if a point lies here it is not in the second or the third quadrant supposing a point lies here it doesn't lie in the second quadrant or the third quadrant it lies on the x axis it lies on the negative side of the x axis on the x axis on the negative side of the x axis if a point lies here it is not in the first quadrant or in the fourth quadrant no it is on the x axis and it is on the positive side of the x axis if a point lies here it is not in the first quadrant or the second quadrant if a point lies here it is not in the first quadrant it is not in the second quadrant okay it lies on the y axis on the positive side of the y axis and finally if a point lies here it is not in the fourth quadrant not in the third quadrant it lies on the y axis on the negative side of the y axis 
So these are the other locations. These are the other locations. So uh, a point, a point can lie in in the Cartesian plane. In the Cartesian plane, a point can lie in the first quadrant, say, or in the second quadrant, or in the third quadrant, or in the fourth quadrant, or on the x-axis, or on the y-axis. To be more, uh, you know, like to break it down further, it can lie on the positive side of the x-axis, or on the negative side of the x-axis, or on the positive side of the y-axis, or the negative side of the y-axis so these are the different locations in the if it's not, if the point is not found in any of these regions that that means there is no point at all all right so that's what it is so this part must be very clear the four quadrants and the two axes okay now every point that lies on the x axis okay supposing the uh, a point lies on the x axis uh, say we'll take this point the address of this point is on the x axis it is minus 5 which will be the x coordinate and on the y axis on the y axis it is zero it is zero on the y axis it's not moved up at all it's exactly here so on the y axis it's zero Take this point on the x-axis. This is this is the value you will write for the x-coordinate. So two, comma y-axis zero. See if you take this point, if you take mark this point, so this will be minus three x-coordinate and sorry and one one minute. Let me mark it clearly. Sorry. I'm talking about this point, which is A. I'm going to write its address. All right. So this point is minus three on the x-axis, and this is minus three, and this is two, and it's two on the y-axis. So its address is minus three, comma two. Minus three is the x-coordinate, and two is the y-coordinate. All right. <clears throat> So we write the uh, this this distance. This one is the x coordinate, and that is this distance on the x axis. This one, this distance on the x axis is the x coordinate, <clears throat> and this distance on the y axis is the y coordinate. So similarly, if a point is here, the address of this point is minus four, and on the y axis zero. Here, this one one comma zero. This one. This one on the x axis. This point on the x axis, you can't move at all on the x axis. No, you cannot move. It's right here. So on the x axis, it's zero on the y axis. It is four. So zero comma four. This point. This point on the x axis like this x axis here. No, it's it's here. So x axis it is zero and y axis it's minus three. So this one is zero comma minus three. So to generalize this, any point on the x-axis, any point that lies on the x-axis will be of the form x comma zero, and any point that lies on the y-axis will be of the form zero comma y, not y comma zero. If a point lies on the x-axis, on the x-axis, then its address will be of the form x comma zero. If a point lies on the y axis, its address will be of the form 0, y. 0, y. So the point 3, 0, the point 3, 0 is of the form x, 0. So it lies on the x axis. The point 0, minus 5 is of the form 0, y. So it lies on the y axis. It lies on the y axis. <clears throat> Again, a point minus seven comma zero is of the form x comma zero. X can be positive or negative. So minus comma zero is of the form x comma zero. X comma zero. So it lies on the x axis. This point does not lie in any quadrant. It lies on the x axis. 
And if you have a point like 0, 11, 0, 11, which is of the form 0, y, clearly lies, clearly lies on the y axis, not in any quadrant, on the y axis. Okay. So what we understood is that uh, uh, this is how we write the address of a point and uh, we write the name of the point before this. So like if the point is called P, then we say P X comma Y. All right. So if P is given by the address uh, minus four comma minus seven, this is the X coordinate, which is the abscissa. This is the Y coordinate, which is the ordinate. Now the X coordinate, we're just recalling. I'm not saying anything new. We're just recalling. The x coordinate represents the perpendicular distance of the point P from the y axis. And distance is not negative, distance is always positive. So you will not say minus four units, you will say four units. Distance is positive. The x coordinate is minus four. The x coordinate represents the Perpendicular distance of the point P from the Y axis, which is four units, not minus four. Distance is positive. Similarly, minus seven, the Y coordinate minus seven represents the perpendicular distance of the point P from the X axis. And it's seven units. And we also understood that a point can lie in one of the four quadrants or it can lie on the x axis or on the y axis. Every point that lies on the x axis will be of the form x comma zero. Points that lie on the x axis will be of the form x comma zero. Points, points that lie on the y axis will be of the form zero comma y. Zero comma y. And uh, the address x comma y is not equal to the address y comma x. For example, uh, we have say 3 comma uh, 5. This address is not equal to the address 5 comma 3 because we know 3 comma 5 is 3 comma 5 is this one, this one. While 5 comma 3, this is 5 comma 3, 5 comma 3 is this one. This is 5 comma 3. So the address 3 comma 5 is not equal to the address uh, 5 comma 3, which means x comma y is not equal to y comma x. x comma y is not equal to y comma x. It's equal only when the coordinates are uh, equal. Like if you have 5 comma 5 or 10 comma 10 or you have minus 10 comma minus 10. If the x coordinate and the y coordinate is exactly the same, then it will be uh, that is x sorry x x comma y is equal to y comma x if x is equal to y x comma y is equal to y comma x if x is equal to y x comma y is not equal to y comma x if x is not equal to y So I think uh, with that we come to the end of the introduction or the theory part of this chapter. And this theory part is important to understand the further, uh, you know, part of this chapter. That is when we get into the exercises, when we have to answer questions, this is very important. You need to understand this clearly to answer the questions. Now let me just give you an idea about what kind of questions you can get in this chapter. Though coordinate geometry is considered very easy, sometimes we don't even revise this chapter for the exam. You could still end up losing marks on questions from this chapter. So 
let me just tell you, I'm not going to talk about each and every question that can be asked in this chapter. For that, we have to actually work so that you, you know, you come across the, the different types of questions you can get in the exams. I'm just going to roughly tell you the, uh, you know, like the ones which come for uh, three marks or four marks. We'll talk about that now. So are the most likely questions, most frequently asked questions. I'm telling you about that now. So you will be asked to plot. You will be asked to plot three or four points. Normally three or four points, because when you plot three points, it's a triangle. When you plot four points, it can be a. It can be. It's a quadrilateral, and you will be asked to uh, specify the type of quadrilateral it is. So you have to say if it is a parallelogram or a rhombus or a rectangle or a square. You need to or a trapezium. Or a kite. OK, so these you have to remember. You may be asked to plot. Am I children? Uh, yeah, I'm asking you this question very late, but uh, my voice is audible and clear, right? All of you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma OK, and I've shared oh. my, I've been sharing my screen all the while. My screen is visible, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So, I said uh, you may be asked to plot three or four points. Okay. So, supposing you are asked to plot three points, uh, say a, uh, let's say like uh, three comma three and b <clears throat> b minus three comma three. All right. Now two points here it is. So that's what. <laughs> so two or three points, two points, three points, four points. Let me, I have something to tell you about this. Listen to me. So now we'll have to plot these two points. Let's plot. Okay. So three comma three. One, two, three comma three. Somewhere here. Okay. Roughly here. A three comma three. All right. B is minus three comma three. So one, two, three. This is minus three. Minus three comma three. So minus three comma three here. Okay, so this is B, which is minus three comma three. Now they may ask you to join uh, these two points to the origin. They'll ask you to plot these two points and join these two points to the origin. So you will join A to O and B to O. All right. Now they'll also ask you to join the points uh, that these instructions will be given. All these instructions will be given in the question. Plot the points A comma A and B. So we plot. And then join the points to the origin. Join the points A and B to the origin. So we join the points to the origin like this. Also join uh, the points A, B, A and B. So you. Now the triangle, sorry, the figure formed is a triangle. And the name of the triangle is AOB, triangle AOB. Now, normally children get confused. When you're asked to name the triangle, we name it like this. The triangle is triangle AOB, not this name. Give a name, meaning give a special name. So we know triangles are classified based on angles and sides, right? So you should classify the triangle as uh, uh, an isosceles triangle or equilateral or scalene or a right triangle, uh, acute, obtuse, whatever. So you must use these terms. Name the triangle does it does not mean okay. You name it like this. That's fine. This is fine, but does not answer the question. Name the triangle. This is not naming the triangle. So you need to specify the type of triangle it is. OK, so now I ask you this question. Give a special name to the triangle AOB. Think, think. Think, think for a minute. Don't you don't have to uh, come out or blurt something immediately. Think. Give a special name to the triangle. So, so let's... Isosceles. OK, Swati says isosceles. OK. Um, 
अनुग्रह अनुग्रह ट्रयांगल एम सिक्यू यू नो वाट द फिगर विल बी गिवेन एंड गिव यू फोर ऑप्शन so yeah so that's where you know you have to be otherwise you lose one mark if you're wrong you lose one mark it's not about the mark children actually it's about how much we know that's all it is forget the mark all right now uh help me to find the length of ob children what is the length of this line segment ob i want you to Please. help me to How much? Three units. Uh, no, it's not three units. All right. So uh, let me just uh, give you some more clues. Can I mark a ninety degrees here, children? Yes. No. This is ninety here. This ninety here. So this is a right triangle. This is also a right triangle. Both are right triangles. Let's mark this point uh, C. So C O B. C O B is a right triangle. Why? This one is. This one when you connect these two, don't you think they lie? Three and three. Three three when you connect, it will go parallel to the x-axis. See when you connect when you connect this point and this point. it's not going to be connected it's not that one point is at a low level the other is at a higher level you are not going to connect it like this if it's like that then i can't say this is 90 you can see that the two points uh, uh, b and a they lie on the same level see here it lie this is 3 so when you join ab it will be parallel to the x axis No, uh, one minute. I can't proceed. If you don't agree with me that it's ninety there, then I can't uh, proceed. Can I mark ninety here? It is ninety. Is it difficult to believe? I'm saying, okay. Let me connect it for you. When you connect this, children, this full figure is a rectangle, right? we don't have to do so much of research actually 
Now this point B and this point A, they lie on the same level at the same height above the X axis. So when you join these two points, it will go parallel to the X axis. And if you want to make it very, very mathematical, we know this is 90 degrees. So since this line is parallel to this line, this, these two lines are parallel to one another. This is 90 because origin, no? Origin, this is 90. So co-interior angles are supplementary. This is also 90. This is 90 degrees, children. Now this is a right triangle, COB, uh, with this one as three units, and this one also as three units. Okay, so let me show the triangle here. Three units, three units. B, C, O, 90. Now let's find OB using Pythagoras theorem. So OB is equal to, or OB square will be equal to uh, BC square plus OC square. So OB square is equal to 3 square plus 3 square, which is 9 plus 9. 9 plus 9, 18. And when you, uh, OB square is equal to 18. So OB will be equal to the square root of 18, which is 3 root 2. OB is 3 root 2. So we see that OB is not 3. OB is 3 root 2 units. And how can you find the length of the line segment OB? Using Pythagoras theorem. Using Pythagoras theorem. OB is 3 root 2 units. Similarly, you will find that OA is 3 root 2 units using the same idea. In triangle uh, COA, in triangle COA, COA, in triangle COA, this is 3 units, this is 3 units. Children, see, this is 3. This one is 3. So this one will be 3 root 2. So clearly, OA is equal to O, sorry. Clearly, OA is equal to OB, 3 root 2 units by Pythagoras theorem, 3 root 2 units. So since two sides are equal, it is an isosceles triangle. But can we have more findings is the next question. Can we find more? Let's try to do that. Now take the whole triangle. Let's take the whole triangle. B, A, O, this triangle, this whole triangle. Now you found that uh, O, B is uh, 3 root 2 using Pythagoras theorem. And O, A is also 3 root 2 using Pythagoras theorem. Now you know how much is A, B, children? What's the length of A, B? What is the length of A, B? 6. 6. 6 because it's 3 here and 3 here. So it's 3 plus 3, 6. This is 6. Now let us see if the sides satisfy the converse of the Pythagoras theorem. If these 3 satisfy the converse of Pythagoras theorem. So for that, what should you do? 6 is the longest side. 6 is the longest side. Square that separately. Let us have AB square separately. 6 square 36. Now, Find the sum of the squares of the other two sides. That is find OA square plus OB square. So you get 3 root 2 the whole square. What is that? 18 plus 18. OA square plus OB square. 18 plus 18, which is 36. So clearly AB square is equal to OA square plus OB square. So by the converse of Pythagoras theorem, triangle AOB is a right triangle, right angle that O. Why right angle at O? Because AB is the longest side. And we know that the angle opposite of the longest side is a right angle. If this is the if it is a right triangle, if it is a right triangle, then where is the right angle? It is opposite of the longest side. So this is the longest side, 6. So this one is uh, 90 degrees. So this triangle, you don't have to work all this, children. Once you, you know, like understand this, it will remain with you. So in the exam, it's mostly MCQ or they'll just ask you to give a special name to the triangle. You don't have to justify that. They'll simply say give a special name to the triangle. So in MCQs, if it's uh, you'll have to choose the correct option. For that, you should already know it. So now this triangle is an isosceles triangle as well as a right triangle. So this one is very specifically a right isosceles triangle. This one is a right isosceles triangle because it's right angle here and these two sides are equal. So it is a right isosceles triangle. 
So this holds good for anything like this holds good for like you might be wondering like for what all points will this satisfy? Now whenever you have to mark say like uh, this is minus five, no? so some minus five comma five. And at the same height, you know, same height here, uh, same distance, five comma five, five comma five. So when you mark points like this, the same height, no, five units, and this side uh, five units. That is this side five units, this side five units, and above here also five units. When you mark points like this, and when you have to join them to the origin, and also connect the two points. Such a triangle is always up because these two sides will be equal. And this angle will be a right right angle. So this one, when information is of this sort, this triangle is always a right isosceles triangle. But uh, you will get marks even if you mark, I, even if you say isosceles triangle or just right triangle. But in MCQ, you have to be specific. Right isosceles triangle will be the correct option. Otherwise, see, supposing these options are given, you know, scalene triangle, scalene triangle, and then um, acute triangle. Okay, acute, then right isosceles. And supposing it's given none of these, none of these. So probably we'll go with none of these because you know it's not scaling. You feel two sides are equal. It's not it, uh, or maybe you'll say it's acute. Maybe you'll say it's acute. If you feel it's acute, maybe you'll say, but you will think, no, it's not right isosceles. So maybe you will go with none or acute, but it is right isosceles. Mom? Yes? Mom, in the figure that you have drawn, whenever we calculate the area of any figure, we used to count the number of square that the particular line covers. No, oh, mom? Yeah, that is if it lies, uh, that is if the two points, yeah. Now here, you know, OK, now here I cannot show, but you can just open your graph notebook and try to draw this. You cannot count the squares correctly. You cannot count the squares correctly. It will be the diagonal part of the square. OK, one minute. See, the, the squares will be like this, no? On the graph paper. Good question, uh, Swati. Like you see, this will be the diagonal of the square. How will you count this? This is a diagonal, no? This one is a diagonal, this way. We count the squares like this. One, two, three, like this. You cannot count one like this. This is not one, that's a diagonal of the square. Square I'm saying is that on the graph sheet you have squares, no? So when you're counting like this, this one is a diagonal of the square. It's not one, it's more than one. Let me show you here. I'm saying. Now oh, these are the checks you have. Okay. Now. Okay. See, if you have to count from here to here, it is four units only. If this is the origin, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, four units, correct. But supposing a point is, supposing this point, okay? You want to count the distance OB, OB, uh, sorry. If you want to count or you want to uh, find the distance OA, OA you cannot count like one, two, three. This is not one unit, this is not one unit. This is the diagonal, see this is a square. This one is one, this one is one, this is one and this is one. This is the hypotenuse. It's the diagonal of the square, which is not one. So you cannot count one. You cannot say this is one, this is two and this is three. This is one because graph paper, that's how we mark, no? We say minus three, next is minus four. This, this spacing is one unit. Am I clear, uh, Swati? Yes, ma'am. No, is it understood or you just have to believe because I'm saying that? Oh, ma'am, understood. Okay. So 
this point is A and this point is B. The distance AB will be from A. This is one. This is two. Two units. AB is two units. AB is two units. But supposing this, there's a point C and you want to find the distance AC. If you want to find the distance AC, you cannot count one, two. No, this is not. This one is not one unit. This one is not one unit. This is one unit. This is one unit. This one will be more than one unit. Okay. Yeah, so there can be a question like this. Uh, so here we uh, we are given two points. We have to mark the two points on the graph paper. Uh, join the points to the origin. Also join the two given points. So this way you get a triangle. Give a special name to the triangle. Find the area of the triangle. For the area of the triangle, you can count the squares. Find the area of the triangle also can be a question. Normally uh, you are asked to find the area. So find the area of the triangle. Area of the triangle is half base. This one is three units. This one is three units. Six and this height is three units. So half base into height, half into base six units into height three units. So that's the area of the triangle. OK, so this is one situation. Sometimes you are given four points or maybe three points. Sometimes three points will be given. Mark the three points, join and again identify the triangle. Give a special name to the triangle. Can be a question. And then find the area of the triangle. When you're given four points, ask to mark the four points. So if you get the four points like this, uh, one, two, three, four, like this. You mark the four points and when you join them. They look like this. OK. These lines will be parallel to the X axis children. Supposing you get, get a figure like this. These two lines will be parallel to the X axis. That is this height. You can see that this height. This height. And this height, this height, both will be the same. The distance between two parallel lines is the same everywhere. The distance between two parallel lines is the same everywhere. So you can make out from the height. So then what is what is ABCD children? What is ABCD? Give a special name. Trapezium. Trapezium. More specific. More specific. Trapezium also we have three types or we have a scalene trapezium or we have a right trapezium and we have an isosceles trapezium. Trapezium also we right have three trapezium. types. Yeah, it's a right trapezium. It's a right trapezium. Trapezium also we have scalene. Scalene trapezium that is like it look like, you know, something like this. This one is a scalene trapezium. That is when the non parallel sides are not equal. When this side is not equal to this side, it's a scalene trapezium. If this side is not equal to this side, it's a scalene trapezium. When this side is equal to this side, that is when the non parallel sides are equal, it's an isosceles trapezium. So that look like this. These two sides are equal. Isosceles trapezium. If these two sides are not equal, scalene trapezium. If one side is perpendicular between the parallel sides, you can make out. These are the parallel sides, and this side is perpendicular to the parallel sides. It's a right trapezium. Right trapezium. So isosceles trapezium, scalene trapezium, right trapezium. This is a right trapezium. This one is an isosceles trapezium. This is scalene trapezium. So when you mark uh, four points, the quadrilateral can be a trapezium. 
or it can be a kite. It can be a kite. So it will be like. When you get a figure like this. When you plot the four points, when you plot the four points and you see a figure like this. Oh, sorry, when you plot the four points and you join them in order. And you get a figure like this, it's a kite. It's a kite. For trapezium, uh, how do you find the area, children? How do you OK, now make a note of all this. Let me talk later in your uh, uh, book. Make a note of this. Rectangle and square, you know, ln to b and side into side. Not writing that. I'm not writing rectangle and square, you know it. If you have to find the if it is a rectangle and you have to find its area, ln to b. Square side into side. Trapezium, it is half sum of parallel sides into distance between the parallel sides. For kite and rhombus, half product of diagonals. And for parallelogram, base into height. For rhombus, also you can find using the formula base into height, but not in this chapter. Meaning you cannot count and find the base and height here. So it will be half product of diagonals only. Otherwise, in in mensuration, you can find the area of the uh, area of a rhombus using the formula base into height. But in this chapter coordinate geometry, it is half product of diagonals because only that you can count. So we won't use this here. Triangle, you know. If it's a triangle and you have to find the area of the triangle, you know half base into height. A rectangle square, you know. So these you have to remember. This also, you know. We are just recalling. Rhombus and kite half product of diagonals. Parallelogram base into height, not half base into height, simply base into height. And trapezium half into sum of the parallel sides into distance between them. Is it over? Done, children. All right. So if you plot and you get a trapezium, OK, you plot and you get a trapezium. You get a trapezium like this, children. OK, so A, B, C, D. Half into some of the parallel sides. So you should count the uh, spaces here. So, like one, two, three, four, five. See, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two,
two, three, four, five. This is five units. And here also you should count like, okay, there's one, two, three, three units. And distance between them, you should draw a line like this. Don't count this one. Not that. This one, you should draw a line. You should draw this line segment and count the spaces. One, two. I'm just saying, for example, one, two. So area of the trapezium is equal to half into sum of the parallel sides, three plus five, into distance between them, two. Half into sum of the parallel sides. A, B, and C, D are the parallel sides. So three units, five units. Into the distance between them, you should draw the height of the trapezium and count how many units you have. How many squares are there? If it's two, then simplify this. Half into eight into two, eight, eight square units. So like this for a trapezium. Same thing for isosceles, uh, isosceles and right trapezium. Just that for right trapezium, you don't have to draw the height at all. If it's a right trapezium, this itself is the height. This is uh, say like one, two, this one, two, three. Some of the parallel sides, this one and this one are the parallel sides. And this side itself is the distance between them. Here we have to draw the height more. So here you can take this side, this side itself as the height. If it is a, if it is a right trapezium, right trapezium. These two are the parallel sides. Count how many units are there. And this side itself can be taken as the distance between the parallel sides. You don't have to draw the height separately. Isosceles trapezium also same thing. You might get it like this. Same formula. Formula is the same. It doesn't change because it's isosceles trapezium. Same thing. Count one, two, three. And this one here, one, two, three, four, five, whatever, six. Then you should draw this height and count. One, two, three, four, like that. So this is how you uh, find the area of a trapezium. Parallelogram, base into height. Parallelogram, base into height. Okay, so you mark the four points. You get something like this. See, children, in whichever quadrant the figure lies, don't uh, consider the negative, uh, uh, ignore the minus sign. These, uh, you know, the lengths of the uh, line segments are always positive. So don't get confused with the signs. All these will be positive always, wherever the parallelogram lies. So you, even if the parallelogram lies here in the third quadrant like this. Also, so you count like. You can count, there'll be, you can see the boxes. You can see the square here. You can see the square here and a square here. So three is the base. Three is the base. Height, you should draw children. You should draw the height like this. From here, you should draw the height. And you must count this one, two, maybe 2.5 also. I don't know. So base into height. This is a parallelogram. It's a parallelogram. Areas base into height. Base, you can count this one. Height, you have to draw. Don't count this. One, two, three. That's wrong. This is the height. Base into height. So that's about a parallelogram. Rhombus, easy. So you have a rhombus here or maybe a kite. This is one die. You should show the diagonal. See, when you plot the four points, you will not have the diagonal. You should connect the diagonal. To count, you should connect the diagonal. When you plot the uh, four points, when you plot the four points and join them in order, you will have this figure. You'll have this figure. Now you have to find its area using the formula half product of diagonals. So you must you must connect. You must connect this and count one, two, three, four, five, 
six. It should be six only. It can't be seven here. So my favorite, because if it's three here, it will be three here also. It's a wrong best no? It cannot be four here. Diagonals bisect each other. If it's three here, it will be three here also, children. Yeah, mine is just a rough figure, so I'm getting a little more. So ignore that. If it's three here, it will be three here. If it's four here, it will be four here also. Okay, if it's four here, it will be four here. If it's uh, two here, it will be two here also. So half into product of diagonals. This diagonal is eight units into this diagonal is four units. Product of diagonals. That is length of one diagonal into the length of the other diagonal. Half D1, D2. Half into D1 into D2. Half into D1 into D2. Half product of diagonals. So D1, if you count, if you count D1, the length of this diagonal, you get 8. This diagonal, 4. So half into four, 8 into 4. So this is how you find the area for rhombus. So you plot the points, you get a quadrilateral, you know it's a rhombus. You cannot be wrong. Now you'll be like asking me, uh, how do I know it's a rhombus? Like this one itself is a check. If it's four here, it will be four here also. If it's three here, it will be three here also. If you count, this one and this one will be the same. And so maybe five, five. And then this one, if it's three here, this also will be three. So rhombus, you can find the area like this. Height also, I said same formula. Kite and rhombus, you can use the same formula. Half product of diagonals. Uh, parallelogram, you can say base into height. Uh, rectangle square, you know. Trapezium, we discussed. Half sum of parallel sides into distance between them. Yeah, that's all. Only these questions can be asked. Plot the points will be the first instruction. Join the points in order. Second instruction. Give a special name to the figure. So special name is not, uh, you know, A, B, C, D, P, Q, R, S. That's not a special name. If it's a quadrilateral, what, what? Give a special name to the quadrilateral. So you must call it a trapezium, parallelogram, rhombus, rectangle, square, kite, like that. That will be the third instruction to give a special name to the quadrilateral. And then, uh, find the area of the figure, figure whatever figure obtained. So uh, that's all. These are the questions that can be asked. Okay. And uh, yeah, one more thing is okay. I think I'll take a question and explain that. Yeah. Is it okay so far, children? Yeah, please acknowledge. Any questions? Any questions, children? Shall I proceed? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma All right, yeah. So last class, uh, I had asked you to work this one. So let me explain this. In the last class, I had asked you to take down this answer. Uh, this one. That's all I think. OK, so let me explain that now.
So the question says, in the given figure, in this figure, triangle ABC and ADC, ABC, there's ABC, okay, ABC, triangle ABC and triangle ADC, ADC, okay, are equilateral triangles on the common base AC, on the common base AC. So this one is an equilateral triangle. This one is an equilateral triangle. Both of them have the same base. Uh, AC. Each sides of the triangle being 2A units. It's equilateral, right? So this is 2A. This is 2A. This one is also 2A. This is 2A. This is also 2A. Now, the question is, how do you know that both the triangles have the same sides? That's because AC is a common side. They are two different equilateral triangles. They are two different. See, one can be like this. The other one can be big. So this can be like, uh, you know, 2A. This can be some 7A, 7A, 2A, 2A, 2A. But we, it's given that both the triangles have a common base AC. So for one triangle, if AC is 2A, for the other one also it will be 2A. And it's equilateral. So all the sides are equal. So everything is 2A units. From the information given, this one is iso sorry, this one is equilateral. This one is also equilateral. Both the equilateral triangles are identical because they have the same, uh, they have a common uh, side, AC. AC is the side of this triangle. AC is also the side of this triangle. That means both the equivalent triangles are identical. They're identical. 2A, 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 2A. Now these two, uh, you know, either equivalent triangles together, if you see them, it's a rhombus. If you see it together, it is a rhombus. Okay. Each uh, side, uh, each sides of the triangle being 2A units. What is this A and C? What is it A and C lie on the X axis? Yeah, we can see A and C on the X axis, B and D on the Y axis. Yeah, B and D on the Y axis. Yes, we can see that. O is the midpoint of AC and BD. Okay, that's given to you. O, o, is, the, o is the midpoint of AC. O is also the midpoint of BD. Because the diagonals bisect each other. If it's a rhombus or a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. O is the midpoint of AC and BD. That means the diagonals bisect each other. Find the coordinates of the point B and D. Find the coordinates of the point B and D. B and D. So let's see the question again. So we have an we have an equilateral triangle like this and like this. The points A and C lie on the x-axis, B and D lie on the y-axis. Uh, the origin, the origin is the midpoint of AC and BD. The origin O is the midpoint of AC and BD. The sides being 2A units, 2A, 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 2A. This one is also 2A. And if O is the midpoint, if O is the midpoint of AC, then it has to be A here and A here. Because it's given, it's given that O is the midpoint of AC. And uh, this one is 2A. So it has to be A here and A here. So if you take up the right triangle, these are right triangles because the X axis and Y axis, they are perpendicular to each other. The X axis and Y axis, they are perpendicular to each other. So if you take up, you know, this right, any one you can take, there are four right triangles. You take any one of the four right triangles. So this one is A, this is 2A. I'm, I'm talking about this right triangle. This right triangle. Now we can find OB. 
using Pythagoras theorem. You can find OB using Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so how do you find OB using Pythagoras theorem? OB square plus OA square is equal to uh, AB square. OB square, we don't know. OA square is A square. AB square is OB square is equal to 4A square minus A square. OB square is equal to 3A square. OB is equal to the square root of 3A square. OB is equal to root 3A units. So this one is OB, no? This one is root 3A. The length is root 3A. That means this point, the marking of this point is root 3A. The marking of this point is root 3A. Like if this one is 1, like this one is 2, this one is root 3a. Why? Because why? Because OB is root 3a. Excuse me. OB, this height, this height OB or the length OB is root 3a unit. That means this one, this point should be root 3a. This one should be root 3a. Now, what is the question? The question is so simple. There is so much of description, but the answer, the understanding is very simple. Find the coordinates of the point B and D. That's all. That's the question. Find the coordinates of the point uh, B and D. Uh, clearly, B lies on the y-axis. So, its x-coordinate is already known, zero. Without any difficulty, we can find the x-coordinate of B and D. Since the points B and D lie on the y-axis, their x-coordinates are 0. So B is 0, comma something. D is also 0, comma something. Now we found this height. We found this one. OB is root 3A. So that means this point is root 3A. So 0, comma root 3A. So this one is also zero. This one also same thing, no? Because O is the midpoint. O is the midpoint of BD. So if this one is root 3A, this one is also root 3A. So this one is root 3A, but on the negative side. So minus root 3A. This is on the negative side. See, if I say this one is 4 unit, this will be a positive 4. But this one will be a negative 4. So 0, comma, minus root 3A. Minus root 3A. Because it's a negative side. So the coordinates of the point uh, points B and D, 0, comma, root 3A and 0, comma, minus root 3A. So what did we do? We just applied Pythagoras theorem. That's it. There is another way of working. I think this is how I have done it here. Oh, I have, okay. I have both the solutions. Okay. Okay. So this is one way of working, children. Very simple. See here. We just have to take up this triangle. We just have to take up this triangle. We know that this full thing is 2A. So this one is A, this one is A. And these are uh, these are uh, what triangles? Equilateral triangles, no? These are the equilateral triangles. So this one is 2A, 2A, and this is 2A, but we take it as A and A because O is the midpoint of AC. Now we are just taking up this triangle, children. Which triangle? Any one you can take. I have taken this triangle. This triangle. Where you know, you know it's a right triangle. And you know two sides. So you can find the third side using Pythagoras theorem. That is OB. OB squared plus OA square is equal to AB square. When you work this, you can find OB. And OB we got is root 3A. So that means this point is, the marking of this point is root 3A. And so the marking of this point will be because O is the midpoint of BD. So if this distance is root 3A, this also will be the same thing, root 3A. But since it's on the negative side, it will be minus root 3A. So the coordinates of the point B, B is on the y-axis. So x-coordinate is 0 and the y-coordinate is root 3. 
t is also on the y axis its x coordinate is 0 y coordinate is minus root 3 this is that's all the answer is we just have to use pythagoras theorem and find the value of this point and then get the coordinates isn't this simple children isn't this very easy no okay if it is easy to understand raise your hand all of you not all of you if it's easy to understand raise your hand swati netra oh sorry niveda bhavishya natsa anugraha krishna priya anirudhan abhishek sahana laksha ayagamai shri vatsan okay so blessy is there pranav are you there Yes, okay, Pranav. Pranav, any questions you have? Miss, no, no, Miss, but I, I can't understand all this. Very good. I like that. Now you can ask me questions so that you know it becomes more so that I understand where I am not clear or what part is you know uh, difficult for you to understand. Just ask me some question. Okay, uh, Hari. What is given about triangle ABC? Equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle. What is the length of AB? Two a. What's the length of BC? Two a. What's the length of AC? AC two a. Two a. Okay. Now, what kind of triangle is uh, ACD or ABC? Equilateral. Okay, equilateral. Now, do the two triangles have a common side? Yes, ma'am. What is the length of the common side? Two a, miss. So then, how much is AD and uh, CD as well? Two a, miss. The, is this part clear? Yes, miss. Okay. Now, which is the midpoint of AC? Ohms. And the midpoint of BD. Ohms. Okay, fine. That part is also clear. How much is AC? AC A plus M. No, no. What is the length of the line segment AC given to you in the question? Two A miss. Two A. Now O is the midpoint of AC, right? Yes, miss. So then, how much is O A? O A M. 2a by 2, 2a by 2. This one is a, correct? And yes. how much is this one? A. A. Yes. Okay, fine. This one you understood. Now, since the the triangles are equilateral, this one we know is 2a, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Now the question is to find the coordinates of B and D, correct? Yes, yes. B lies on the y-axis. Yes, yes. So its x coordinate is zero. Yes, miss. Yeah, D lies on the D also lies on the y-axis, so its x-coordinate is zero. So we have yes, to find miss. this one. We have to find the y-coordinate to answer the question. To answer the question, find the coordinates of uh, B and D. To answer this question, we need to find the y-coordinate of B and D. For okay. that, we take up the right triangle AOB. See, this is right triangle. This is right. This is any one triangle you can take. You take up any one triangle. Okay. Okay. So I have taken the triangle AOB, which is in the first quadrant. Okay, miss. Okay, AOB. Okay, and we already know this is A and this is 2A. Now tell me, what is the result by Pythagoras theorem? Miss, How do you express OB Pythagoras? Yeah. OB square. O B square plus O A square is equal to A B square. Yeah, substitute. Miss O B square plus plus A square is equal to two A square. Yeah, it's not two A square. It's not two A square. It's two A, the whole the square. Whole 
Oh, because okay. what is A B? A B is two A. Two A. It's see A B is one thing. A B is one thing. It's not B. It's not A B square. A B is one thing. Okay. Now two A two A is are two different things. It is two into A. They are two different things. Two into A it is. So if okay. you write two A square, you're wrong. A B square. A B is two A. You should square okay. this. Yeah. So O B square is equal to. A square. Four A square minus A square. Okay. So O B square is equal to. Three A square. Okay. So O B is equal to the square root of three A square. So O B is equal to root three, root three A units. A. Okay. Very good. Very good. So root three. So that means the length of the line segment O B. Is root three. Yeah. So that means. See uh, now when it is root three a, <clears throat> the length of the line segment. See now suppose I say O B is five units. That means this one will be five. No, because O B is five. So that means this point is five. Yes, miss. So if O B is root three a, that means this this one this point marking as root three a. This one is root three a. Yes, miss. Okay, so we got the y coordinate. The y coordinate is root three a. Because it's on the positive side of the y-axis, it is plus root three a. But d is on the negative side of the y-axis, so this also will have the same marking root three a because this is equal. This one is equal yes. to this one. Yes, miss. Because O is the midpoint of uh, BD, so this also will be root three a only. But it'll be because it's on the negative side, it will be minus. See, okay. distance is positive, but when you mark the uh, point, it is negative only. That point is minus root three a. So the coordinate, the y coordinate here is minus root three. Okay, miss. All right. Yes, miss. All right, Hari Prima. Very good. Thank you. I'll just come back. You know, I have some water and come back. I'll explain the other method for you. I think I did this one. I was talking about. Yeah. I was talking about this method. I'll just come back. I'll just have, um, <clears throat> have some water and come back. I'll tell you about this.
all our children. So the other method you see is. Uh, yeah. So the other method you see is uh, by using the formula to find the altitude of an equilateral triangle. You can do that also. <clears throat> see, our intention is to find the uh, length of the line segment OB. So that if you supposing this length is seven units, then that means this marking is seven and this marking is minus seven. Supposing OB is 10, supposing OB is 10. Supposing OB is 10. Then this one is also 10. So this marking is 10 and this marking will be minus 10. So we are interested in finding <coughs> the length of these two line segments. So you can also find OB using the formula to find the altitude of an equilateral triangle. ABC is an equilateral triangle. And OB is its altitude. OB is the altitude of the equilateral triangle ABC. And how do you find uh, the altitude of an equilateral triangle ABC? Root 3 by 2A. Root 3 by 4A square. <coughs> Root 3 by 4A square is a formula to find the area of the triangle. Root 3 by 2 into side is the formula to find the altitude of an equilateral triangle. OB is the altitude of the equilateral triangle ABC. So to find the length of the altitude, we need to use the formula root 3 by 2 into side or into A. <clears throat> okay, so root 3 by 2 into side will give you the length of OB. So that is equal to root 3 by 2 into side is 2A. So 2 and 2 gets cancelled, root 3A. Now you say, so easy, this is why did you teach us the Pythagoras theorem? You should know that also. You must know. <coughs> So that's all we finished. This is the answer. If you use the formula to find the altitude of an equivalent triangle, that's it. We got it. What you got using Pythagoras theorem here you find using the formula. That's all. They are also using Pythagoras theorem. We found OB. Here we are finding OB using the formula because OB is the altitude of the triangle ABC. Formula root 3 by 2 into side. So root 3 by 2 into side is 2A. <coughs> side of the triangle. So root 3A units. So OB, this one is root 3A. So this is root 3A and this is minus root 3A. So answer to very important question. Very important. Very important meaning frequently asked. Frequently asked question is what I'm saying very important. This is understood children. <clears throat> OK, I'm proceeding once I'll just explain this and wind up the session for today. Uh, this one, because these two uh, I had asked you to uh, work in the last class, so I'll do this one. And so now what's remaining is <clears throat> Uh, I'm done with the introduction to the chapter. You also tried a paper. So this actually covers everything, but I have some more in my material. I'll, uh, I'll tell you, I'll give you instructions on WhatsApp. Yes, so we are good to start off with the next chapter. Um, <coughs> linear equations. Uh, not linear, you have only one for nine senators. Uh, for nine standard, it is a linear equation in two variables. That means only one linear equation. Next year, you will see a pair of linear equations in two variables. This year, it is one equation, one linear equation in two variables x and y. This year, one linear equation in two variables x and y. Next year, two linear equations in variables x and y. So a pair of linear equations in two variables x and y. <coughs> so today, the, sorry, this year is only one linear equation in two variables x and y. So I think we are good to start the chapter in the next class.
I'll just give you some assignments because the rest of quantum geometry you can understand. You don't need uh, my help at all. You can just follow it yourself. I have the material with the answers. So the, <clears throat> with this, you know, uh, discussion today, you will be able to help yourself. So I'll wind up the session with <clears throat> this one, children. Now, in the question, we have find the coordinates of the vertices of a rectangle placed in the third quadrant in the Cartesian plane with length P units on the X axis and breadth Q units on the Y axis. <clears throat> so sometimes, you know, uh, in the question, there might be something which is not very clear. So you have to make assumptions. <clears throat> One second. Yeah, so you have to make, uh, you know. Not assumption which cannot be true assumptions, you know, which uh, are true. <clears throat> All right, so find. <laughs> sorry, find the coordinates of the uh, what is. So I think this one, you know, we did. We did uh, understand a little in the last class, so. <clears throat> Yeah, so what are the details given? The rectangle lies in the third quadrant. So understand the details given in points. Don't keep reading the question, uh, you know, like from end to end like this. If you don't understand, don't read it again from end to end. Break the information. <clears throat> Break it up. OK, so what is one thing given? Uh, the rectangle is placed in the third quadrant. This is one thing. Then the length of the rectangle is P units. On the x-axis, that means from the origin. On the x-axis, meaning from the origin. So that's not given. So we need to understand that. Length p units on the x-axis. P units on the x-axis from where? P units okay, x-axis okay. From where? So from the origin. <clears throat> breadth, is, breadth is q units on the y-axis. The breadth is Q units on the Y axis. OK, Q units on the Y axis. But from where is it? From where to where is Q units? From the origin to that point is Q units. So like this, uh, certain assumptions you need to make. If we have come across a question where uh, it was given that one of the vertices of the rectangle lies in the origin. So there it's very clear. You don't have to make any assumption. The paper which you solved in the last class, uh, there was a question where we had this information that uh, one vertex of the rectangle lies in the origin. So here it's not given. <clears throat> that means uh, P units from the origin, Q units from the origin. So that will solve the mystery. So now it's in the third quadrant. It's in the third quadrant. Uh, length is P units on the X axis. So from the origin, this is the origin. This is the origin. It's on the X axis. So it can be P units like this or P units like this. But since the rectangle is placed in the third quadrant, it cannot be like this. It has to be P units like this. <clears throat> P units can be like this or like this from the origin P units. But it can cannot be this P units because then the rectangle will be here. Or it may be here, but it's in the third. It's in the third quadrant, so it has to be P like this. P units like this. This is P units from the origin length, length P units X axis. This is the X axis. This is the length P units from the origin. From the origin to this point is P units. That means this point is P. But since it's on the negative side of the X axis, it's minus P. <clears throat> this distance, uh, this length says four units. Supposing this length is four units. The length is four. 
but this point which is here will be minus 4 because it's on the negative side of the x axis. Length of the rectangle P units from the origin. So from the origin P units. So this one is P. So this point will be minus P. And since <clears throat> it lies, this point lies on the x axis, its y coordinate is known, it's 0. And then Q units breadth. Q units breadth. Breadth Q units on the y axis. So y axis Q units can be here or here. But since the rectangle lies in the third quadrant, it has to be here. Q units. So then this one will be minus Q because this is the negative side of the y axis. So it will be minus Q. And <clears throat> On the y axis, the x coordinate is 0. So clearly it is 0, comma minus q. So we already know one point uh, O, the, which is the origin given by 0, comma 0. Then we found this vertex, which is minus p, comma 0. We found this vertex, which is 0, comma minus q. So using this and this, you can find the fourth vertex. So it has to be minus P comma minus Q. Like if you had minus three here and you had minus five here, then this point will be given by minus three comma minus five. <clears throat> if this is minus three and if this is minus five, this one is minus five, then the coordinates of this point will be minus three comma minus five. So this is <clears throat> this is minus three. Okay, let me mark that. Let me not mark that and confuse you. So if this is. Yeah, so if this point is minus three and this point is minus five, then the coordinates of this point would be minus three comma minus five. But here it is minus P and this one is minus Q. So this one will be minus P comma minus Q. <clears throat> so the question is to write the coordinates of the vertices of the rectangle. So the coordinates are this one, A minus P comma 0, B. You cannot find B in the first place. You will find it in this order. You will know O, then you will find A, then you will find C. After this, you will find B. B actually, so if you, if I should correct it, I should put B here because B is found after finding A and C. After finding A and C, with the help of A and C, we find B minus P comma minus Q. So B is actually found after being the last coordinate to be <clears throat> found. Is this clear, children? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, lower your hands and raise your hands, children, if you have understood. Lower your hands, all of you. Anugraha and others, lower your hands. <clears throat> Now raise your hands, children. Please do not raise if you have if you have not understood or you have a question. Krishna Priya and Abhishek. Plessy, Srivatsan, Bhavishya, Hari Pranav, Anugraha, Swati, <coughs> Nayagama, Mritsa, Aniruddhan, Sahana, Laksha. Okay. And Niveda. All right, children. So this also is uh, one among the most frequently asked questions. So in that sense, it is important because it's frequently asked. It's very important. Very simple. You just need to understand the information given in parts. In parts. Don't read the question from the beginning to the end. Break up <clears throat> the information and understand them. So this was just one session and we are done with uh, coordinate geometry. Uh, so I'll just give you two more uh, assignments to be completed on this chapter. While working them, if you have any issue, we'll take it up in the next class. <clears throat> Otherwise, we are good to go to the next chapter, linear equations. No, a linear equation into variables X and Y in the next class. All right? All right, children. All right, children. So that's it for today's session. Thank you so much. You may leave the call. Good night. Thank you, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, children. Thank you, children. Good night. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Good night.
Thank you, Mo. Thank you.